Hello and a very warm welcome back to the garden. Now if you're a new gardener you probably want to avoid some mistakes over summer and so this video is dedicated for you to make sure that you can have the best success from your garden as possible and the ninth mistake I think is the most important but also gives you the most opportunity. So the first thing, if you're growing vegetables, there's a bunch of vegetables that go over quite quickly or they just get too big. So uh, courgettes are a prime example. This here is a beautiful yellow courgette. Now, if you look away for about five minutes, this will turn into a marrow. And how on earth do you then deal with a massive glut of marrow? So keep on harvesting at the right size. The same applies to peas and also beans. They do go over quite quickly. So just stay on top of the things that mature quickly. The next mistake is don't forget about pests and diseases. So things like these strawberries, obviously I've netted these and enjoyed so many of them, but things like brassicas, there's this horrible pest, uh, cabbage white caterpillars, which just can ravage brassicas. So you need to make sure that you set a routine at least once, if not twice a week to go around those and check under the leaves for any eggs or even better, protect them with some kind of netting, but it's gotta be a really fine netting and mesh. That's the other thing as well. When you're going around the garden, look out for any potential disease issues. Is there any blight? Is there any powdery mildew? Because the sooner you see it, the sooner you can take action and save the crops. Another mistake is overwatering your tomatoes or watering tomatoes on a irregular basis. Both of these can lead to the fruits cracking and splitting and then spoiling really quickly. The way that I approach watering tomatoes is fairly consistent. It's going to be twice a week. Uh, just give them a, a nice soaking. Sometimes I'll add a little bit of a liquid feed, but I just like to stay to a routine. Just make sure that during really, really hot weather, you might have to water one extra time um, during the week, but I like to stick to around two. I don't like to overthink it. And that is a way just to make sure that you get nice tomatoes that don't crack. The next mistake is not making most of natural liquid feeds, especially for any succession crop. So we've harvested the first crop from this area already. This is Cape Hoosbury that's now been transplanted. And so the simple act of adding a liquid feed is just gonna make sure it's a nice little supplement to help especially new seedlings to get the nutrients that they need to continue to grow and produce. The next mistake is not utilizing partial shade provided by taller crops so you can grow really successful salads and other leafy greens during the heat of summer. So there's space underneath the sweet corn where I can transplant plugs of say rocket or lettuce or spinach or coriander or dill and they're going to really thrive in this more kind of cooler position shaded by the sweet corn but they'll still get enough light to produce really really nice harvests. So the same applies if you're growing say peas or structure of climbing beans. How can you utilize that shade and make the most of it? Another common mistake is forgetting about deadheading all of your flowers. Uh, especially, well these are cosmos here, not an edible one. Um, you want to deadhead things like roses as well unless you want the rose hips. But especially for things like calendula, deadheading calendula is really important to encourage a nice flush of extra flowers and prolong the flowering season. Because if you've got them to this stage, if you then stop deadheading, you're gonna lose the magic. Whereas if you do deadhead, it extends the magic. That's how I like to think about it anyway. Another mistake that I see a lot is actually forgetting to find some time to invite some friends or some family over and to have a meal or have a nice afternoon or summer's evening in the garden, you know, having a barbecue, whatever, but just making sure that you separate some time where you're not just working in the garden, but you're also relishing it because summer only comes once a year. Um, and it's really important that you kind of have all of those nice memories. You put in all the hard work, make sure you put in some hard work, just relaxing and sitting and enjoying it. That is one of the main reasons why we garden in the first place. So it's easy to forget that. So this is just a friendly reminder. The next mistake is that you're not following Chef Sam Black on Instagram. Sam is a great friend of mine and he creates these amazing easy ways 
for us to enjoy the produce that we grow in our gardens and it creates the most beautiful reels. So I just want to give like a little note of appreciation for that. And there is, there is definitely seriousness in this because if you're growing all of this food, it's really important to create a bit of a plan with how you're going to preserve the gluts, how you're going to best enjoy them, all of the different ways that you can enjoy one particular ingredient. So if you want a little bit of inspiration, go check out all of Sam's amazing content. The next mistake is not plugging little gaps that appear in and around your garden with more seedlings because this is a Malbar spinach that's going to grow and it's a little bit of space that I can occupy. So make sure to plug as many gaps as possible because it's going to keep your garden nice and productive and aesthetic and it's going to help reach the full potential that it has to offer. Now you might be wondering, hang on a minute, I thought it was summer, I thought there's no more seeds that I can sow to plug gaps. Well, you'd be wrong, which is a great thing because there were so many things that you can sow in July. This video right here shows you over 20 different edible crops that you can still sow this month. So get sowing, I'm still busy doing it, and then you can start plugging more of those gaps to enjoy even more food.